Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, Hurricane Track here. It's now Thursday, the 29th of August, 2024. Hope your Thursday afternoon is going well. We have some stuff we have to watch out there in the Atlantic Basin now. One that is officially outlooked, as they say, from the National Hurricane Center, and then a couple of other areas, one in the Gulf of Mexico, and then another feature off the coast of Africa that will probably soon get added to the graphical tropical weather outlook. And then we have to watch all of these features closely. It is late August. We know what can happen this time of year. It's also all about the impacts. We might not have any hurricanes out there right now, but it doesn't take hurricanes to cause problems. We certainly should know that by now. All right, so let's see what's happening out there first. National Hurricane Center homepage. There's our yellow X. Over the next 48 hours, very little chance of development, and we understand that looking at what's happening out there. But if you expand it to the next seven days, there is a possibility, 40% probability right now, that this does go on to develop somewhere in the vicinity of the Caribbean Sea. And then the way the steering patterns look, this has a really good chance of making it somewhere into this vicinity beyond the next several days, early into next week, something like that. Nothing to worry about for U.S. interests right now. Our first areas of concern will be the islands over here of the Eastern Caribbean. It is a large weather system. It's impactful, even as it is, as a tropical disturbance. Heavy rain, gusty winds, all of that stuff. I know it's usually all about the hurricanes, that all-important H-word, but even at their genesis points, we do need to be watching these systems because they can bring impacts. Meanwhile, the East Pack, uh, almost completely void of any areas. Now we have Gilma over here, a depression, just about done. And as we suspected, once this gets shut down and we don't have anything else out here, the Atlantic Basin should come to life, and that's what we are starting to see. So it all does kind of fall into place. It makes sense. Meanwhile, though, yep, we got a couple systems here in the Central Pacific, and uh, that would be Gilma, which kind of bleeds over to the East Pack as well, uh, and then Hone, which could come back and maybe strengthen more getting across the Dateline and uh, becoming a typhoon. It's just a name change. That's all it is, but it won't affect land probably anytime, anywhere in the near future, if ever again. So here's what it looks like on satellite. And of course, Tropical Tidbits was having trouble in the overnight hours. It just kind of went offline. So we're waiting for some of these satellite images to update. I'll refresh the page. Yeah, it's getting a little bit better there. Stuff happens, right? You know, not everything's completely 100%. You get a few hours of downtime and what do you do? <laughs> well, you wait and it comes back on and here you go. So there's our system in the Gulf of Mexico, a flare up of showers and thunderstorms. Again, more of an issue for all of the petroleum industry that's down there. Thunderstorms, not a pleasant thing, I'm sure, out there. Gusty winds, maybe some water spouts out there. I can only imagine the pictures that have been taken of some wild weather and other things in the Gulf from the men and women that work out there on those oil platforms. Don't really see much chance that this can develop. It's not zero. And, you know, you say that simply because it makes sense. You got a disturbed area of weather over very warm water in late August. You don't sleep on it. You have to wait and see once it's all inland. But I'll tell you what, it is going to bring an increase in moisture to the northern Gulf, and you could get some very heavy rain along the I-10 corridor and vicinity because of that. Meanwhile, our current area of interest is located right in here. Looks rather innocuous right now. You've got the intertropical convergent zone and the monsoon trough sitting out here. Once this sort of becomes its own thing and can kind of detach from that monsoon trough and then take off to the west, it probably will develop. Most of the model guidance is starting to wake up to see that scenario. It makes sense with the time of year we're looking at. And just the general background pattern seems to be generally favorable. So, yeah, you know, that 40%, that makes a lot of sense to me. And who am I to argue anyway, right? But we do have to watch this because the steering patterns are such, as I said, that this could easily get into the Caribbean Sea. And then you never know, once you get into this area, things could be very, very favorable, especially since we will be talking about early September, a climatologically favored time period for that region. 
Meanwhile, I think we can all clearly see the rotation with this next feature that's coming off Africa. A couple of days ago, my thumbnail had the headline of something like, Will it develop or something? Or will this develop? Yeah, it could too. A lot of the model guidance liking this system as well. And we might be right back on track after a little bit of a break. Not so sure yet, because nothing's developed quite yet. But we just might be getting back on track to this very busy season as we enter the month of September and things could get busier from there, seeing some indications that a much more favorable pattern will set in across the Atlantic Basin. So maybe this was just a little bit of a speed bump along the way to a very, very active season. So we'll watch these two features and see what happens with them over the coming days. Let's take a look a little bit closer at what do we got out there. These are some of the tools that I like to use, the vorticity signature. Again, it's really weird. You've got these little almost like vertical if you look at it from that perspective just as a flat graphic here's your horizontal there's your vertical it's like you're looking at a cross section of i don't even know what but it is different it's not what we're used to seeing where there is one coherent area you have these little areas of green which shows very low amounts of vorticity and the relative vorticity the spin in the atmosphere down there at about 5,000 feet but it's generally going to be in this area roughly that we're going to be watching Maybe a little piece right there. And let's just see what happens. Does this start to curl up and become more cohesive and then sort of, like I said, develop into its own entity off of this grapevine, like I like to use that analogy? And uh, we'll see. At least we can watch. This is a really neat graphic to keep up with things like that. Notice there is just a little bit of vorticity in the Gulf of Mexico, but nothing concerning. Much more in the Eastern Pacific, but this is all linear stretched out over a large area. It's not really bundling up. Hey, did you guys see the incredible tornado videos that came out of parts of the Dakotas yesterday? Very interesting feature. Almost looks like an eye, doesn't it? Big upper level system. Uh, it's moved on now from where it was yesterday, obviously. And it is uh, responsible, that weather feature, for that incredible photogenic supercell, big hail, tornado producer yesterday what was it near mound or something like that south dakota just thought i would point that out all right another thing to point out and this is also a very useful tool the total precipitable water helps us to also see you know where the spin is where could something germinate from so to speak and there looks like a little bit of a piece of energy right in here that is trying to develop and that fits in perfectly for where our area of interest is and then clearly you can see the energy coming off of Africa. And then there's more over Africa that we'll wait for in the coming days. There is a surge of moisture that pushed its way through the islands yesterday. Quite a lightning show for our friends Brent and Timothy down there. Both of them texting me yesterday. I saw it. I saw it on the cams that we've got down there. Big lightning storm. Series of thunderstorms really that came through. And then tons and tons of moisture at least this shows the total precipitable water very high amounts in the gulf of mexico but there's not really any turning you know we don't see that we didn't see it in the vorticity signature either so you wouldn't expect that it would show up on this product either but i do have my eye on this little area right in here i think that makes sense and again the time of year everything else we'll watch this and i'll use this product and that prior one over here over the next few days to watch how these things evolve all right so interesting tweets from people i like to peruse the for you part of twitter and uh, oftentimes it is weather related and you know you pick up on what other people are saying uh yeah the area of disturbed weather in the gulf of mexico now has a weak broad vorticity east of southeast texas yep it's very weak almost like a little surface trough also shown on the surface report, something to watch. And this is important. We know that the global models in the past have missed on development in this area before, especially if it stays offshore in a weak steering environment. Just the slightest curvature to it overall. You can kind of see that in there. Don't want to reach too far because there isn't really much there. But it is a big clump of thunderstorms, that's for sure. And again, that could impact, look, all those yellows, that's lightning. That's the lightning data, the GLM lightning flash data uh, picked up from satellite. And a lot of that lightning out there for sure. Elsewhere, I thought this was interesting. 
Yeah, the good old GFS. We're going to look at the modeling in just a moment. This was here a screenshot from the 6Z Zulu time run of the GFS. And, you know, it showed a formidable system between the Cayman Islands and Jamaica, south of Cuba, at about 228 hours out. And then you look at the brand new GFS uh, at the same time frame, virtually nothing. What happened? Well, a lot of it has to do with if anything develops to get going. And the GFS just didn't do it this time. And, you know, sometimes that happens, especially with these early systems where there is not a lot of deep convection out here, not much for it to pick up on. You have to understand that the models use a variety of input to create the numerical weather output that we see. It's upper air data. It is satellite data. It can look at, I say look, air quotes again. And there's just not much there. I'm shaking the monitor. Not much there. Maybe I should put cinder blocks on it or something. Um, I didn't want you to think there was an earthquake in here. But there's just not much there for the modeling to really grasp just yet. There's certainly no Air Force or NOAA recon data. There are no Global Hawk missions out there. There's no upper air soundings out there. So for whatever reason, on this particular iteration of the GFS, the Global Forecast System Operational Model, that one run, it whiffed. Didn't see it. But the other models are keenly on board, and I can show you that as we go through the next several uh, couple tabs here. So this is the Euro from the 12Z today, and I want to compare and contrast this to the overnight run. So we got it out to five days, and the area that we are watching is right about in here. Let's see if something develops, and you got this too, although that's not the one on the Hurricane Center's map. This one is. So let's just look at this out over in 24-hour increments. This is tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, Labor Day, and then Tuesday. Yes, an identifiable entity certainly ramped up there from where it is in the Eastern Caribbean. When? September 3rd. That alone should ring the alarm bells that we need to watch this. Is this the same as, oh no, a huge hurricane is coming? Of course not. And I'm not saying that. We do need to watch it though. That is for sure. This is what it looks like in the 850 millibar vorticity field and it is similar to what we saw in the overnight run this is from 0z last night right so it's about 12 hours earlier and we run this out it's a little bit more potent in the overnight run and so you just never know it's early real early we don't have a defined system uh, but we do need to watch this because the model is showing us what can happen if we do get Genesis out there if something does indeed develop the model shows us that over time this, the uh, environment could be favorable. So we do need to watch that closely. All right? And of course we will. It's the you know, quite pretty much literally the middle of hurricane season. So let's go over and just look at, uh, we already showed you the GFS. I'll show it to you from the vorticity standpoint. Uh, and again, there's just not much there if we take this out to a week. It just whiffed. You know, again, sometimes that'll happen. The Canadian, though, uh, this is the 12Z today, and it is very similar to the Euro. It develops the system pretty quickly and uh, goes through the eastern islands there and then into and through the Caribbean over the next week or so. We're going to need to watch that very closely. It develops more systems. You can see them, one there, one there, and this, again, September 3rd. We would need to be on top of this regardless. So now we have something to pay attention to. That's the bottom line. Nothing to get anxious about uh, just yet. Certainly if you're in the islands, you're sort of on the front lines of these systems as they get going, and you guys need to be ready for whatever comes your way. And that's what we'll be talking about over the next several days. All right? All right, that'll about do it for today's update. From all of us at Hurricane Track, I am, of course, Mark Suddeth. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.